Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. My name is Paul Siegel and I wanted to put together a primer tutorial on how to get started with the ruler and some of the companion products currently available. So the first product I'm, I'm going to talk about is the ruler itself, which is essentially the white frame, uh, the wheel, and uh, two of the markers that are used for different creating different aspect ratios. And then after I go through that, I'm going to go over the arc maker, which has a smaller wheel, and the arc maker itself, which spins around it. And then finally, some of the other companions, like the spider, which is new, the rule of thirds guide, the black mat for value assessment, and the warp guide. So I'm going to go through each of these individually and show you some tips on how to go about using them so that you can get started on your compositions. Okay, so let's get started with the ruler. The circle in the center and the wheel are used for creating circles, and you can start with the frame itself to create a larger circle, and then the dots on the inside, or the holes on the inside, for creating smaller concentric circles. Um, this is pretty fun to do because you can be drawing circles as you move the ruler across the page and create interesting, interesting marks and spirals, and of course you could just uh, use it partially and not all the way around to create arcs. Then there are the thin guides along the sides. These have notches, and uh, the reason behind that is I wanted to be able to plot a, a line and the increments at the same time. Um, the, the reason for this is because often as designers we're wanting to create grids really quickly, and with this, as you can see me doing here, I can create a line, in this case I'm using the inch marker, and I can keep making more lines, and then simply draw perpendicular lines to those markers and create a grid that I can use for my designs. Um, there are three units of measurements. Um, the very small one, which I'm drawing now, is millimeters, and the other two are inches for the larger one and centimeters for the one in the middle. The other thing that you can do with the, this, this ruler is it has a perspective guide and that line that I'm plotting right there um, on the bottom of that edge is the horizon line. Now the more careful you are with this the cleaner your lines are going to be. And then I like using the side of the ruler for drawing the perpendicular lines to get my perspective grid. You can of course flip this around and if you align things carefully you can get two-point perspective. And normally what I do is I don't draw the horizon line since I've already partially drawn it. I just complete it since it's already there. And then use the side of the ruler for creating the other perpendicular lines. And you can see very clean two-point perspective. Now the nice thing about this grid is that it's perfect or you know very close to perfect because what I mean by that is that those are squ perfect squares so each corner is 90 degrees in perspective and those two squares that I've highlighted are the same. They're the same size, not on paper, but in perspective they're the same. I've made these notches um, large enough so that you can use different uh, tip sizes, so you know, like the pencil I'm using here or even ballpoint pen uh, in case you want to put something in lightly and then use marker over the top of it. Now notice there that since the sides are thin, they can bend and be flexible, so whenever I'm adding my cross sections, I use the, um, the short end of the, of the ruler. Now here what I'm doing is identifying where the horizon is and using that to create a third point so that I can have three point perspective. And I can complete these, um, these lines to find my vanishing points and use that vanishing point to then complete the grid for that third point in perspective. And here I am just sort of freehanding and making use of the grid, uh, using the golden rectangle to crop it out and come up with a composition of kind of it looks like it's looking up at a building. Uh, it's really great to, to have these um, grids that you can build very quickly because using those grids you can break up your space 
into a number of different relationships that will enable you to create really compelling and, and appealing compositions. And that's essentially the, 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 the purpose of, of many of these devices. The other thing the ruler comes with are these two guides and they snap right into the, the golden rectangle to create different aspect ratios. But of course, the very first aspect ratio that, that the ruler provides is the ruler itself, which is one to two. And there's the golden rectangle, of course. Now, there's a notch right in the middle, um, vertically and horizontally. This is not for an aspect ratio. This is simply for you to use as a visual guide kind of the equivalent of holding the pencil um, in your hand and holding it out in front of you so you can kind of analyze um, the sizes of things, the proportions of things, or how they tilt and shift um, relative to the horizon or your eye level. So here I am um, plugging this, this guide into all the different notches so you can see all the different aspect ratios that you can produce with this simple little device. Now the downside of this is that those notches are part of the golden rectangle uh, shape. And so when I plot these uh, rectangles with my pen, I try not to push too hard along the border so that those notches aren't as, as evident when, when drawing the squares. But um, they do interfere slightly. I thought that was a small price to pay for the, for the simplicity and flexibility of, of doing it this way, rather than having multiple squares on a device and losing all that space. So that's essentially the ruler. You got the, the wheel, the perspective guide, the golden rectangle, and the, the rulers with notches on the sides for creating grids. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the arc maker, which is this little device here that has a smaller wheel and it fits into the arc maker frame. The first thing I want to point out is notice that from one direction it holds in there pretty nicely but from another it'll pop right out. This is important because you want the side of the frame that is holding the wheel in to be facing you and the other side to be facing the, the paper otherwise it won't spin freely because you'll be pressing down on the frame of the arc maker. So you want it ideally spinning freely just like I'm showing here and hold, hold the wheel firmly while resting another finger on the frame lightly so that it doesn't ride up on the wheel and then simply plot your marks. You're either making arcs or entire circles. As you can see, once you get the hang of it, it's very easy to do. And each of these um, markers are spaced evenly. Um, they are one centimeter apart. So that in and of itself is kind of cool because you can create these radial grids, which is kind of fun. And like I said, you can use it to just create partial arcs or entire circles. Now I designed this device and all the others with fairly big openings. And the reason for that is I wanted it to be friendly to a number of different pencil tip sizes. And so because of that, there is some potential inaccuracy. Uh, you'll notice here I'm plotting a line with one of the notches and I was able to create a thick uh, line by simply letting the, the tip of the pen swim around that opening. And so um, you'll you know, want to be mindful of that, that as you're creating your arcs, you're t having a tendency to have the pen rest on the outside or the inside of that circle, or just make a single mark rather than multiple marks on top of each other. You can also use this wheel as another way to play with the ruler to create some circles or spirals and experiment. As you may recall, this was originally how I was going to create different circles, was provide you with different size wheels, but that was ultimately changed for the one wheel that had different um, openings inside of it. Now here's another example of what I was just talking about. Uh, for all the guides, this is really true. You'll notice, especially in some thin areas where it's flexible, but if the pen is resting on different sides of that opening, there's a number of different ways in which that line could be plotted. So you'll want to be mindful of this. Uh, so two things to, to consider is, one, make sure that the, the pen is aiming toward the edge that you want to use. 
and the other is don't press too hard because otherwise some of these some of these guides are going to warp on you that may be something you want um, but if not you know just just press lightly this is true uh, as well uh, for the perspective grid it's got each of those openings has two sides so pick the side that you're going to be using for plotting your path to help illustrate why this is especially important in the case of the perspective grid this animation is showing the horizon line right there in red so it's not the line above it but the one right there in the middle when you go about plotting your paths you're going to create a grid in perspective and create these squares now in reality those squares are actually composed of four squares and I mentioned this because that's essentially why those rails have two sides on the bottom and top they represent the actual width of the squares that this grid is made up of so just keep that in mind as you plot the paths using the perspective grid um, I usually use the one that I'm showing there and the horizon line and the one on the opposite side of the of that rail and that gives me a good grid to start from okay so now I'm gonna show you how to use a couple of the other guides but first of all I wanted to point out that I got rid of the pegs because I found they weren't very user-friendly uh, for carrying around or putting inside between pages um, or even just flipping the device around so you could use both sides of it so I just got rid of them put holes instead and so now the attachments fit in through those holes this one right here is the value finder it's just a black mat so that you can hold it up against objects and assess how bright something is relative to black and the other guide is the rule of thirds guide fits in the same way uh, you'll find depending on the way you you fit it in it might be loose so try the other end because these little openings have that similar lip that I pointed out in the arc maker tool and again the rule of thirds guys is a great way to find compositions in nature or analyze the tilts and twists in form okay so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the warp guide now uh, this has two tools in it actually it has that little uh, right angled triangle which is great because it has a 90 degree corner and the great thing about right uh, angle triangles is you can flip them around to make perfect squares or keep going even to make other right angled triangles in the process so it's kind of like a miniature straight edge now the warp guide is essentially just like the perspective guide but um, it's warped and the horizon line was the very first line I plotted there at the very bottom and exterior of the guide um, unlike the perspective grid these guides are one-sided uh, you can use the other side if you just want clean lines without uh, without the bumps and that's very beginning is the is the vertical line of sight and then you can freehand the arcs from there now what this does is it gives you a plane in perspective that is warped so you can then go and flip this around if you want to have that plane continue on from one side of the horizon to the next and get this sort of uh, fisheye lens effect essentially now of course uh, before plotting your lines just make sure that the guide is, is well aligned with the drawing that you already made so you don't get uh, offset lines and you can then flip this around again uh, on the bottom to create a complete a fish eye effect if you're trying to do like the reflections of a building um, or a horizon line or a landscape now the other thing that you can do with this is you'll notice there I'm just using part of the grid and I'm making a little marker and reminder for myself of which notch I used and then flip it around it's almost like I'm having the grids collide on each other and what you can do by doing that is essentially create squares or rectangular shapes in perspective so you could create uh, you know fisheye city scenes and buildings so finally I want to show you this new tool called the spider which is essentially my take on the French curve um, this is one of the tools that actually leverages the flexible nature of the material that I'm using to print these and you'll see here what I can do is essentially pick the curve that works for the design that I'm working on it could be some fonts or some calligraphy and I can create really nice clean inked lines um, to clean up my designs 
and I'm just uh, picking the arc that fits for that particular curve and the side of that arc as well. Now in that case I didn't have to do any sort of um, distorting but you'll see here um, that you can actually bend that curve and hold it as you plot your path so that you can create all the curves in between the curves that are presented there. They can expand outward and compress inward to meet up with each other. So you can virtually find any arc you want. Now obviously scale is an issue. This is a pretty small uh, version of a spider. But um, if you guys like it, um, I think I might look into getting these made much larger if you want to draw um, on larger sheets of paper. But as you can see here, being able to bend it to and pick the side of the curve that works for you is going to let you find almost ev every possible arc and curve um, that you can you can think of. Now obviously time will tell whether that is true or not but I thought this would be a much more elegant solution to the whole French curve problem. And this is me just going through some other examples um, just showing that you can really find every every curve that you're looking for. But again scale it is meant for it is pretty small so it is meant for for small drawings and studies. And I kept testing this over and over again, and I was able to find uh, every curve that I wanted. So there you have it, guys. Um, hopefully that gives you a pretty good introduction on how to use all the tools. I'm sure you're going to find other ways in which to use the device and clever ways in which you can mix the, the perspective grid with the arc maker, with the warp guide. Um, I'm sure there's all kinds of cool things that are going to emerge and I'm really looking forward to getting your feedback and hearing how things go with the ruler. So once you get it and you get to play with it, please stay in touch and send me your feedback, okay? Thanks guys.